Hey guys, today I'm going to do a quick tutorial on editing and how to get Visco-like effects without actually using Visco. And so um, this is our after picture and this is what we started with. And I really struggled with what I wanted to do with these pictures. And I don't know if any of you guys do this too, but when I like a picture the way uh, the colors are, I have a board on Pinterest that I just named Editing Inspiration. Um, if you want to find it, just I think there's a link on my YouTube page, but you could just look up Ashley B30, but how I could relate some of the things that, the colors that I really loved back to my photo. Um, so the first thing you always want to start with, or I, I think is the best thing to start with, is your white balance and your exposure, which in this case is fine, so I'm not going to do anything to that um, right now. Uh, but let's go into the colors, which is the fun, the fun thing. And this right here is a really cool uh, tool for that a lot of people don't know about. So normally you'll see it like this where it's highlights, lights, darks, and shadows. Sorry, my text is going off. Uh, anyways, if you click this little box, you'll get RGB, which is red, green, blue. And you can move that and just affect the, the shadows and light. But if you click in here, you can start pulling the actual individual colors into your photo. Okay. We're going to start with the green channel. I'm not going to really do much, but I'm just going to pull this down a little bit right there. And then I'm going to go into the blue. And if you don't know how this works, by the way, over here is your shadows. In the middle is your midtones, and over here is your highlights. So like that creamy effect you see in a lot of photos, really it's so simple. You just pull this blue down and you can add yellow in and make it vintage. Um, but anyways, what we're going to do is we're just going to pull this down a little bit and bring in a little bit more of the blue. Here I'm going to put a point because I don't want it to affect my highlights as much. So. Sorry, I'm trying to look at my screenshot I took on my phone so I can walk you guys through this. Here, we're going to bring that back up a little bit so it affects the shadows a little less as well. I'm going to bring that down a little bit more. Okay. So, now we're going to go to the RGB and we're going to move the light. So, I'm going to bring the shadows up just a tiny bit and I'm going to put a point, kind of make like a little arch right through here and you can drag and pull those off by the way if you have a point that you don't want that's on there so I'm just going to give it a tiny little lift through here and we're gonna pull this down to mute the high the um, the highlights a little bit as well the next thing that is really fun to play with is the hue saturation and luminance and here we're going to bump the reds up. I really want her lips to stand out. So I'm going to bring the reds up a little bit. I'm going to bring the oranges up a lot. And you'll see why in the end because we do desaturate it a little bit. But we don't want um, her to be dead looking. So it's important that we bring enough color in that when we pull it back out, she still has some color to her skin. And I'm just going to bring all of these down. So I don't really want any other colors to be the focus. I just want it to be really muted. And then we're going to click on the hue and start playing with that. Um, this is the, this brings your reds like almost to a blue base and this is going to add a lot of yellow. And so I'm just going to bring it a little bit over, add a little bit of blue into our reds. And I'm going to add a little bit of orange into the skin tone versus yellow. So we're going to go to negative seven. On yellow, I'm going to go plus three just to add a little bit of green in there. Um, greens, we're going to take them a little bit towards the blues. You see that a lot in film. I really like the way that looks. You could go real extreme. You can see the trees changing colors in the background. We're not going to get like carried away, but we'll put on 20. Now we're going to go into the luminance, and I'm not going to do too much, but I do want to bring the greens down just a little bit. So I'm going to put that on minus 21. And then that's really not doing much, so we'll leave that alone and let's see. Sometimes I just like to move them really extreme and you can tell what it's affecting. That's really not doing much either, so I'm just going to leave that alone as well. And now we're going to go into the highlights. This is 
Like seriously, I know I keep saying that every section I get to, but everything on here, you guys should be using them. I used Lightroom for forever and I didn't play with it. And I just used my a few settings every time, but then like I just started playing around with all the different sections and figuring out how they affected my image and really falling in love. Um, so this is obviously adding color in the highlights and color in the shadow down here. Here's where you pick the color you want to add. Um, this one, I'm gonna leave it at zero, which will add red. I'm gonna bring this to 14. So, and you can just see that way her skin and and whatnot looks a little bit more uh, not dead. And then here is something that I never used to play with, but if you move that, it affect, it changes how much color it puts in the shadows and the highlights. It changes, well, it's called the balance and that's exactly what it does. But that's something that I never used to move either, but play with it, you guys. Seriously, have fun with all the different settings that you have at your disposal. Um, Sharpening is next and noise reduction. I'm not really gonna do anything with that stuff. We're just gonna leave it alone. But let's come back up here to our main settings. Now that we've got some of the color put in, we can start playing with the rest of it. Um, the picture is now that we're making these changes, it's a little bit dark to me. So I'm gonna bring that up and make it super bright. And when we add the contrast in, it'll start to They'll start to look better right here. We're gonna bring the highlights down because we've blown out the picture a little bit. And shadows, I'm just gonna bump them just a little bit, not, not a ton. Whites, we are going to bring it way down. Whites is a really great one. You can see how much that affects the overexposure of the image. I use that a lot and you should too. It's an awesome setting. Um, blacks, we're not really, I'm just gonna leave that, that's fine. Now, clarity, something that I don't always like to move a lot, but in this case, I'm going to. Um, I think it really will make a difference. For now, we're just gonna bump it up to about right there and leave it. Um, vibrance, we'll, we'll leave that. We'll leave that alone, and same with the saturation. Let's click off of, off of this where we were doing custom toning and go into just this and play with it a little bit more. We'll bring this down to negative 37. I just want to get it to where it's contrasty, but nothing's like blown out or not looking good. Let's bring our darks down a little bit and shadows. I just really, I really want this picture. I'm really feeling it as a super contrasty picture. What do you guys think? Um, now let's go down to our profile correction. I always click that. It'll take the vignetting off around the corners. If you want to leave it, you can. You can still drag that back over. And then distortion, I usually will slide that and just see. You can see it kind of moves her face. And moving it to the left makes it her face a little bit more sunken and, and flattering than that where it's kind of more rounded out. So sometimes I'll move that if it's more flattering to the, the subject. Um, I'm not going to do anything with the vignette. We'll leave that alone. We'll leave the grain. We'll put, at, you know what, let's put the grain at like 17, give it a little bit. Um, now down here is amazing tool. You can see how much that affects the photo and that's something that people do not mess with a lot and you should. So let's bring this down just a little bit to add green to the shadows. And I'm gonna bring the saturation of the oranges and reds down just a little bit. Um, let's do that on negative nine. Our greens, I'm gonna bring it over just a little bit. You can see that's just putting a little bit more red and orange back in her skin tone, which I think is more flattering. Um, blues, I don't think that adds much messing with those. I mean, it kind of looks good going that way, um, but I think we'll leave that alone. So last, I'm going to add a radial filter to her face. And you can double click if you have settings from another picture on there, you just double click effect and it will zero it back out. Um, but I'm gonna go right by her face and I'm just gonna lift the shadows just a little bit um, and bring the contra contrast down just a little bit as well so that um, her eyes aren't too dark. And we'll bring the clarity up just a little bit as well to really draw attention to her eyes. And you can feather it, The going over to 100% will make the zone much smaller, I'll show you. So there it's affecting much less in the circle. As you bring it over, it'll bring the effects to the edges of the circle more. 
So that's all I really want to affect is that area on her. So that's about right at 85. And we'll bring this back up so she doesn't look crazy. All right. So let's look at the before. This is the one I did earlier. And this is the one now. Okay, so let's see what did we do different still. I need to. So let's bring our clarity more. Let's go all the way over like I did in the last picture. And then I think what's missing is in our channels, I was being a little cautious and I think I didn't pull this down enough. So if we do that, we can add a little bit more blue in there. We'll pull this down just a little bit too. Um, so this one's still, the only other thing is the highlights are still a little hotter. Um, so I'm going to go, we'll go into RGB and I'm just going to bring the curves down a little bit more. There. And we'll bring the shadows up. I think that one is a little bit less dark. You can see, like, seriously, some of these little clicks make such a huge difference in your picture. It's kind of crazy. Um, so there we go. We're a lot closer now to how I had it originally. It's a lot more matte like it was. You could still bring this down more and matte it even more if you want. Um, the other thing I did in the other picture that I didn't do here is I added a gradient down here, and I lowered the sharpness, the clarity, the highlights, um, just to kind of bring your attention away from her feet and up to her face. And you could do the same thing up top if you wanted to as well. And it just kind of draws your eyes in. So anyways, hope you guys didn't think that was intense and long and you actually found it helpful. Um, obviously, you're using a different lens. You're using different settings. So your picture is not going to be exactly the same mocking my settings. But... Um, you do see how the different areas affect your photo and start there and then kind of move it around, like see what you don't like. Um, maybe you added a little bit too much green or skin tones off. Um, hopefully now, since we went over it, you know, okay, if her skin's a weird color, go into hue and slide this around till it's the correct color. Or you can affect it down here in the camera calibration. So all of these things come together to make an amazing picture. If you guys enjoyed it, Subscribe, like, thank you. Um, I've made a whole $5 off my YouTube channel, which, you know what? That buys a cheeseburger, so I'm not complaining. Thank you guys for watching, and see you next time.